With the holidays upon us, you may be hunting for gifts for the book lovers in your life. To help narrow down the many best books of the year lists, Jeffrey Brown speaks to two NewsHour regulars for our arts and culture series, Canvas. And joining me again this year are two top readers and reviewers, Gilbert Cruz, books editor of the New York Times, and Maureen Corrigan, book critic of NPR's Fresh Air. It's nice to see both of you again. It's good to be Maureen, here. I'll start with you. Shall we start with fiction? Sure, why give us, not? Give us, <laughs> give us two of the it's many that you love. It's been a great year, so two is hard. Alice McDermott's Absolution. Um, anybody who's read Alice McDermott knows that she usually writes about my people, Irish Catholics, <laughs> working class, background, New York. You're this, not biased, are no, you? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. This time she takes those characters and puts them in Vietnam in 1963. We have uh, the main character is a newlywed, a young wife, who is pulled into this group of women who are doing charitable works in Vietnam mm -hmm. while their husbands are busy doing something else. Um, and without being heavy-handed, McDermott manages to make a connection between the insistent charity of these women and early American intervention in Vietnam. Yeah, because that's something else turns out to be the Vietnam War. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> you gave okay. it away. Um, the, other, the other book that I loved, uh, one of the other books, the Heaven and Earth Grocery Store by James McBride. Yeah. I think he's one of our most nuanced but clear-eyed writers about race. This is set in Pots Pottstown, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. around 1925, in a historically uh, immigrant Jewish neighborhood and African American. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll stop there. It's amazing. <laughs> Gilbert, you want to give us two fiction, two novels? Sure thing. So one of my favorite books of the year, uh, one of our top books of the year, was a book called The Bee Sting by Paul Murray. Paul Murray is an Irish author. His book was uh, shortlisted for the Booker Prize this year. And it's a family saga. It is a book about uh, four family members who uh, formerly were riding high on the hog and the 2008 financial crisis uh, is hitting Ireland, is hitting uh, them in their little town. And it's a book that sort of digs deep down into their internal lives, their emotional lives, their sections that go between all of the different characters. And it's a book about um, sort of the unknowability of people that you love. You can live with someone for a very long time and still not get to know them because you can never truly know a person. It's funny, it's sad, it's, it's tragic, it's, it's a lot of things. And you really fall in love with all of the characters. So that's my first one. Okay. Uh, second one called North Woods, and this is by Daniel Mason. And it is set over 300 years, and rather than focus on any individual character, this plot of land and this house in Western Massachusetts is the main character. It takes you through three centuries, and it gives you all these different characters. And through these characters, Daniel Mason writes uh, through several different genres and several different types of literary styles. It's constantly surprising. Uh, and it's just a delight to read. He's, he, his writing is so beautiful. Interesting. All four of these books have a lot of history as well as the family yeah, life yeah. to them. How about nonfiction, Maureen? Yeah, well, here's some more uh, history. Uh, the Wager by David Grann. He's having such a big year. With Killers of the Killers Flower of Moon. Killers of the Flower Moon. Mm -hmm. This work of history, narrative history, is about as traditional as you get. It's about a shipwreck, a mutiny, mm -hmm. survival on a rocky island. A bunch of British sailors uh, are on a ship called the Wager. That ship goes, breaks apart uh, in a storm in 1741 off the coast of Patagonia. And for a while, they survive on this island, and then a group of the sailors patches together a rickety vessel and sails 2,500 miles to Brazil. And that's only part of the story. <laughs> so so that's, that's one of them. And then Safia Sinclair's memoir, her debut memoir, How to Say Babylon, I thought was outstanding. Um, you know, it tells that kind of familiar story about breaking out of a repressive childhood context into a wider world. In her case, she grew up in a strict Rastafarian household. She's a lovely writer. She's a poet. And her nature descriptions of Jamaica, uh, along with everything else, are, are really stunning. OK. Gilbert, to nonfiction? I have to second Maureen's recommendation. All the books she is talking about are great, but I really love that one. Uh, one I will talk about is Master, Slave, Husband, Wife by Ilyan Wu. This is uh, a piece of historical narrative nonfiction. It is about a couple in uh, 1848. They live in Georgia. They are an enslaved couple. 
And right before Christmas, they decide to, to make a run for it, to leave Georgia and try to escape to the north. And the way that they do this is by disguising uh, the wife, Ellen Kraft, who is a light-skinned African-American, as a wealthy white man. And her husband sort of serves uh, or play acts as her servant. And they make this four-day journey. It's very tense. It's amazingly researched. Uh, that's just the first part of the story. You get a peek into their lives after they make it to the north, the way they got involved in uh, anti-slavery advocacy. It's a historical you know, drama. It's a love story uh, that reads like a novel. It's quite an amazing book. The second nonfiction book I will talk about is a book called Fireweather. This one is set now. This one is set in present time. It is a climate change book, Fireweather by John Valiant. It's ostensibly about the 2016 Fort McMurray wildfire which took place in Canada. Fort McMurray is an oil boom town. It is, it is a place that popped up and, and has made great wealth for people based on extraction of oil from the ground. That extraction has led to climate change, and that climate change has led to a giant wildfire that resulted in the evacuation of almost 100,000 people in 2016. And again, it's a book that reads like a novel. It mixes a beat-by-beat -beat account of a wildfire with the history of oil extraction, climate change. It's just masterfully done. I want to ask you just in our short time left here about it, whether you're seeing any trends, either in your own reading or in the writing that's coming across your desk. Maureen? Yeah. Well, as many people have pointed out, we're living in a time um, that's very much like the 30s. Our, our fiction, especially our literary fiction, is very much um, centered on social issues and social problems. I thought it was interesting, though, this year that some novels that I wouldn't have expected to see uh, social issues crop up in especially reproductive rights, um, all of a sudden those novels veered into uh, an abortion rights plot, which was Megan Abbott's suspense novel, Beware the Women, and also, to a certain extent, Ann Patchett's novel, Tom Lake, had that. So we're very much uh, socially conscious mm -hmm. in, in our art these days. Gilbert, what are you seeing? There are tons and tons of historical fiction novels uh, out there, I feel like this genre, if you can call it a genre, just continues to grow and grow. Uh, to mention a book that Maureen just uh, just mentioned, Tom Lake, that is one of at least three books set during the pandemic that uh, came out this summer and fall. Michael Cunningham had a book. Sigrid Nunez had a book. I think we'll continue to see uh, books set during the pandemic. And then there is this the subgenre that has been around for a while and 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 has ruled sort of part of the bestseller list this year, which is romanticy. We have written about it uh, at the Times. Lots of places have written about it, which is a mix of romance and fantasy. And the author Rebecca Yaros, uh, with her books Fourth Wing and, and Iron Flame, sort of really dominated the bestseller list this year. All right, some of the best books of the year: Gilbert Cruz of the New York Times, Maureen Corrigan of NPR's Fresh Air. Thank you both very much once again. Thank you. And you can check out the full book list on our website. That's pbs.org newshour.